The 2024 offseason was really crazy, and there was a lot of new names that moved over to new places, and most of them were big name running backs. Let's find out if that's helped or hurt the fantasy value. Let's go. So first, let's talk about Josh Jacobs. He went to the Green Bay Packers, who also let go of Aaron Jones. When they signed, everyone thought it was going to be a two-man Tatum of Aaron Jones and Josh Jacobs. Still a two-man Tatum, but Aaron Jones was let go and A.J. Dillon was kept. For whatever reason, I'm not really sure. Did Josh Jacobs' value go up or down? I'm going to say it went down. Me being a Raiders fan, that hurts to say, but the Raiders love Josh Jacobs and they use him in a workhorse role. He got the goal line work. He was a third down back. He was the every down back for us. Is he going to be the same in Green Bay? We just don't know. He's one year older. He's also coming off an injury riddle season. Is he going to be the red zone back? We don't know. Again, just as the Raiders love Josh Jacobs, the Packers love A.J. Dillon. I'm not really sure why. One of the biggest names in free agency this year was Saquon Barkley, and where was he going to? He ended up going to the Eagles, which is an NFC rival, and I can't believe, in all honesty, he chose the Eagles over the Texans. I think he would have did damage with the Texans and C.J. Stroud, but, you know, numbers don't lie. Now, you can say what you want about the Giants offense, but Saquon Barkley was the entire offense. Again, he was going to get the goal line work. He was going to get third down, you know, the third down roll, the pass catching. He's going to get everything. He was everything to the Giants offense. Is he that in Philly? Absolutely not. Goal line work, we don't know if the touch push is still going to be a thing. Even if it's not, you still got Boston Scott, who they love. You still got Jalen Hurts. And you still got Kenneth Gainwell. For whatever reason, they love those guys. And they're going to bolster a couple of touchdowns here and there. I'm not saying they're going to be, I'm not saying they're going to vote the touches every, every game. But Boston Scott and Kenneth Gainwell will end the season will, with anywhere between five and 10 touchdowns between the two that should have gone to Saquon. And that's not including Jalen Hurts, who had 15 rushing touchdowns last year. Again, Jason Kelsey retired. Is the tush push still going to be a thing? We don't know, but all we can assume is that his role is going to diminish. He won't be the focal point in the offense, and some people can say that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's good because you really can't you can't game plan to only stop Saquon. You have to worry about A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, Jalen Hurts, Dallas Schuyler. They got weapons on the offense, but at the same time, his touches are going to be limited. Now, is this a, you know, a CMC type situation where his touches were dropped, but his efficiency went up? That's something that still has to be seen. But for right now, I do think his fantasy value is going down. DeAndre Swift signed for three years and $22 million with the Bears. Now, that's workhorse money. He got $15 million guaranteed in that contract. So I do think he's going to be the number one back to every down back for the Bears. They seen what he can do with Philly. Justin Fields wasn't really a check down type of guy. He was a runner. I'm not saying like Caleb Williams doesn't have that athletic ability to take the ball and run with it, but he's going to be a more defined passer than Justin Fields. So he's going to be checking the ball down to the running backs, which helps DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Foreman is gone. They still have Roshan Johnson, but he's not, you know, he's a finesse guy. He's not a bulldozer. So the goal on work is going to go to DeAndre Swift, which again helps his fancy value. So I actually think. Even though the Bears are going to be in a worse offense than Philadelphia last year, I think his fantasy value as a running back goes up. Tony Pollard, we knew he was leaving Dallas. We didn't know where he was going to go. In my eyes, he went to one of the worst spots he could have went to, which was the Tennessee Titans. They have a Tony Pollard clone in Ty J. Spears, who is actually better than Tony Pollard. He's younger. He's faster. He's more elusive. So it's not going to be a thunder and lightning, you know, Zeke, Tony Pollard type where you know, Tony Pollard is going to have the efficiency. Zeke is going to do the dirty work. You have a player in Tajay Spears who's better than Tony Pollard. So why would they give the goal line work? Why would they give the workhorse role to Tony Pollard? He's not the future. Tajay Spears is. He's going to be in a timeshare with a better back. You know, again, it's not like he's in a timeshare with Zeke where you knew Tony Pollard was the man. Zeke was going to get you, you know, three to four yards. Tony Pollard is going to get, you know, get him in open and let him work. It's not the same in Tennessee. Again, I'm not saying his value was that high last year. We had high hopes, but he did let us down. But his fantasy value dropped immensely. I can't see taking Tony Pollard anything higher than the fourth or fifth round at best. Now let's talk about someone's value who increased immensely, Derrick Henry. He went to the Baltimore Ravens. So again, just like Saquon Barkley, 
in Tennessee, he was the offense. He was able to game plan and only focus on Derrick Henry, which he was still able to produce the Ravens. That's not going to be the case. You're not going to only be able to focus on Derrick Henry. You have to worry about Lamar Jackson. You have to worry about not only him as a passer, but as a rusher. Now, what I said about Saquon is he's not going to be the focal point, so his fantasy value drops. I don't want to contradict myself, but I do think that even though the same rules apply to Derrick Henry, his value is going to go up. The reason being, he doesn't need to get that much work. Saquon needed 20 touches. He's young. He's athletic. He was going to get that work. Derrick Henry is no longer in his prime, so those you know five to seven touches that he might not get a game extra is going to help his value and help him for the playoffs. So he won't falter later on in the season. Again, he's going to be the goal line work. The num- they have been the number one rushing offense over the last five years. The Ravens have been one of, if not the best rushing offenses in the NFL, and they've added one of the best rushers in free agency. What do you think they're going to do with the ball? They're going to run the ball. Obviously, that benefits Derrick Henry. They're also a better offense, so he has more scoring opportunity. It wasn't surprising for him to get double-digit touchdowns every single year, and that means the offense. But this year, he's obviously a lock for double-digit touchdowns, and he could probably lead the league in rushing touchdowns. That's not a stretch by any means. One of my favorite running backs in free agency was Austin Eckler, and I wanted to see the way he was going to go. And again, just like Tony Pollard, he probably went to one of the worst situations. He went to the Washington Commanders, who obviously they already have Brian Robertson. They love him. They're going to be draft a rookie quarterback. They have Terry McLaurin. I'm not saying the offense is garbage by any means. Still have a lot of work to do, and it's much worse than the Chargers offense, where he was, you know, he was the guy. Even though he wasn't the workhorse back, he was still getting plenty of touches a game. He averaged almost 20 touches a game. He's not going to get down Washington. He's definitely not going to be as efficient in Washington either. You knew what you was getting with Justin Herbert. He was getting check downs to Austin Eckler. We don't know what we're going to get with the rookie quarterback. Austin Eckler was a top three running back drafted last year in the first round. I honestly don't think he goes anything higher than a third rounder this year, which is sad to say. His time as a fantasy running back stud might be over. Let's talk about Aaron Jones. He went to the Minnesota Vikings. I do think that his value actually goes up. They have Sam Darnold just in case they don't get a rookie quarterback. You lose Alexander Madison. You lose Cam Akers. So you really have no one in that running back room that's going to that's gonna garner a lot of volume. Aaron Jones is a trustworthy back and is someone that they can lean on as a rookie quarterback, which they will be drafting. If not Sam Darnold, he won't be playing the entire year. The game plan in Minnesota is stop Justin Jefferson, not to stop Aaron Jones, which benefits him tremendously. You still have Ty Chandler on the team. So you can say, well, it's going to be a one-two punch with Tyson Chandler and Aaron Jones. But guess what? Ty Chandler is actually worse than Aaron Dillon, as surprising as that is to hear. So Aaron Jones is going to feast in the Minnesota Vikings. And where you're going to be able to draft him at is going to be at a value, which helps his value. Again, I think his value goes up. One of the surprise running backs of the 2023 season was Zach Moss. He helped Indianapolis stay afloat in the playoff race while Jonathan Taylor was nursing his injury. And he did pretty good. Obviously, I agree. I do think he was a one-hit wonder, but where he landed was perfect. He went to the Bengals. They no longer have Joe Mixon. The Bengals is one of the top five offenses in the NFL. The running back position for the Bengals has immense value. I do think the Bengals believe in not only Zach Moss as a workhorse, but the running back position as a workhorse. Again, you've had Joe Mixon over the last four or five years. He's definitely produced, but he's by no means a top five running back by any means. Now, I'm not saying Zach Moss is either. But again, in that explosive offense, the running back position is very important. His value wasn't going to be anything in Indianapolis because Jonathan Taylor came back and he's fully healthy. So him going to the Bengals only helped his value. Now, this was a weird signing, but Gus Edwards went to the Chargers. Harbaugh's already said it. Gus Edwards is our workhorse. John Harbaugh loves to run the ball, as we've seen with his time with the 49ers, Stanford, Michigan. He loves to run the ball. He believes in a running back position and building up the offensive line. I think Gus Edwards is actually going to be a sneaky play this year to have immense value. Eckler is gone. Keenan Allen is gone. Mike Williams is gone. Joe Edwards is gone. Someone has to touch the ball. Justin Herbert can't throw it to himself. Gus Edwards isn't really known as a pass catching running back by any means. But again, he's going to get plenty of targets. And he's going to get plenty of work at the goal line. I think they're going to give him the lead role. So his value, again, goes up. Obviously, the Ravens were a top rushing offense. And the Chargers are not that. But again, his value as a standalone running back is going to go up because of the volume he's going to get. And last but not least, let's talk about Joe Mixon. Again, he left the Bengals. He actually signed with the Texans. Devin Singletary actually had a pretty good year. And Joe Mixon is way better than Devin Singletary. I think he's going to, you know, eclipse 1,000 yards with ease. The Texans are slowly growing into a top offense in the NFL. 
I trust C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud is going to be one of the top quarterbacks in an explosive offense. Tank Dell is coming back from injury. You have Nico Collins on one side, and you have Joe Mixon in the backfield. You still have Dalton Shaw, T. resigned also, so the offense is staying intact for the most part. As a whole, running backs received more than 70 targets last year in that offense. Again, and that was C.J. Stroud as a rookie. He's only going to get better. Another thing is they probably will lean on the run a little bit more with Tank Dell coming back from injury. They don't want to, you know, throw too much at him at one time. I think they're going to lean on the run a little bit more and take a little bit of the weight off C.J. Stroud's shoulders. They've seen what he can do, but they want him to have a long-lasting career, and that's why they went and got a veteran at running back. That's just some of the moves that's happened in the offseason so far in 2024. But again, you got, you know, 10 of the top 20 running backs on the move, which is crazy to see in, you know, the first few weeks of free agency. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. Remember, subscribe to see more content from me and everyone here in Just In Time Media.